Hi folks, I just wanted to do a short video on inflation. As you may have heard in the news, it is extremely high. Um, and so I wanted to talk about the main causes for that. From a business point of view, obviously it's very important in terms of how it affects consumers, but also businesses. And from an economics point of view, obviously we look at inflation to a great extent. Um, so inflation is the rise in the cost of uh, living. So rise in everyday goods, for instance, and the price of everyday goods. And the Bank of England sets a target of 2%. Currently, whilst I'm making this video, it is a sitting at 9.1% and is expected to go higher. So obviously, we are seeing a massive increase in uh, inflation compared to what the Bank of England would target. Now, there's three reasons for this increase in inflation. The first one is the pandemic. The second one is Brexit. And the third one is the war in Ukraine. So these are the three kind of primary reasons that people are quoting for this level of inflation. So let's start off with the pandemic. Now, during the pandemic, from the consumer point of view, people started to realise that they didn't need to spend as much as they usually probably do, especially when those opportunities were taken away from them. And because of the furlough scheme as well, which kept people out of poverty, lots of people managed to save some money, pay off some of their debts, for instance, um, et cetera, et cetera, because they weren't spending on petrol in terms of all going out, et cetera, et cetera. OK, and so what ended up happening is that when the COVID restrictions were lifted, they had money that they wanted to spend. So demand for certain products started getting higher. From a producer point of view, many businesses have not reopened post COVID, the ones that just couldn't survive, okay, because of uh, lack of cash inflow. Sorry, not just that they didn't reopen, but there's some countries that have gone in and out of lockdown so many times that even when they've tried to reopen and get production up to normal levels or provide those goods and services to normal levels, uh, because of going in and out of lockdown, they've not been able to. So they've not been able to supply as much. So we're seeing demand increase, but we're seeing a suppressed level of supply of goods and services okay and therefore we're seeing prices rise now we've seen this in the market for cars for instance um you know the prices of second-hand cars as a result has uh, has really risen um electronics so not being able to get hold of um certain parts of electronic materials you know that would go into laptops etc has increased the prices of those electronics as well okay um, so the pandemic is one reason for this increasing level of inflation and the lack of supply of goods and an increasing demand of those goods. Brexit is the second one, uh, quoted by a lot of economists. Uh, we've got the increased, the com kind of increased complexity of getting goods in and out of the country. Uh, more paperwork, for instance, which means that there is a strange supply chain of resources or finished goods to the UK. Now, obviously, like we said, if demand is high, supply is low, it pushes prices up, okay? Some people have gone as far as stating that Brexit has caused 80% of the level of inflation that we are seeing, okay? So the former Bank of England, uh, a former Bank of England policymaker, for instance, has said that, you know, he believes that at least 80% of the inflation that we're experiencing is because of um, Brexit rather than the pandemic. Now, obviously, that's debatable, but it's important to know that it's quite significant as a reason. Also, we've seen a loss of workers and a fall in exports. OK, so uh, several workers decided to go back um, home if they were working in the UK uh, during both the pandemic because they wanted to be closer to family and they weren't working um, because businesses had closed down. But also post Brexit, some people have argued it made, it made people not feel not very welcome to the UK, so decided to return home. And so we've seen a loss of workers and a fall in exports, again, suppressing supply of goods and services. Third reason, then, the war in Ukraine. Uh, we've seen, as a result, higher commodity and energy prices, uh, which means it's costing more to fill up our cars, for instance, to get to work and heat up our homes. Um, and therefore, we've seen these prices of energy uh, rise and it's directly affecting our purse strings. But also the cost for businesses is something that you need to consider as well, especially in business studies. The cost of running those businesses has increased significantly. Uh, the cost of transporting goods has increased significantly and therefore that's pushing up prices as well. So you've got three things that are having a massive impact on the levels of inflation. And the real issue 
is that you know we're seeing food price inflation now usually if you see inflation in certain goods you know people can opt out of purchasing those products or they might just put a hold on them you know whether it be cars or whatever they might just put a hold on buying those products you can't do that with food so it's affecting everyone and that's a real worry for the bank of england okay and the uk government as well especially because they've said that we can expect for it to get worse before it gets better. So we're not expecting for it to get better until at least next year. Um, and they're saying that inflation levels will continue to rise in 2022. Now, what can be done about this? The most obvious um, thing that the government tends to do is increase interest rates. So to stop people from spending, demanding those goods. However, like I said, because it's such an issue with food price inflation, well, people still need to eat. We're still seeing inflation in that area. So that's not likely to have the impact that it might do if we were seeing inflation in certain industries, etc. The other thing we can do is because one of the reasons for inf inflation, we are saying, is the shortage of labour supply is encourage more people to be in work. Whether that, you know, we could argue that actually some government intervention in making more hours available for nursery, for instance, for free, uh, and providing support in terms of childcare would encourage more women to go to work and therefore we can ramp up our production uh, of goods and services and therefore we can help prices come down. So that's one argument, encourage labour supply. Encourage more local production. Some people are arguing that if we support local businesses, then we should see production increase and we should see prices come down. Now, that obviously depends on whether those local businesses, where they get their resources from. If they're still importing them from abroad, when they're, well, they're still going to face the same problems. OK, but if they are producing locally, for instance, and using local materials, then it might be quite helpful. OK, and also it depends on their relationship with their suppliers as well um, and how much power they have over their suppliers. So this is just a short video on inflation, why it's occurring, some of the options we have to bring it down. Um, and it's something that you should definitely keep an eye on in 2022 and what the impact of it is and how the government reacts to it as well and how businesses react to it is super important.